we're into number six. Number six, truth, lies, growth, and leadership. Can we separate those things? I don't think we actually can. I don't think we can actually separate truth, lies, growth, and leadership. But if we're gonna grow, we're gonna have to look for the truth, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to ferret out the lies in order for us to grow, in order for us to lead. But what if, what if for a moment you just consider, what if the, what if who you believed you are is not who you are? I know that's kind of a traumatizing idea, but what if who you believe you are is not who you are? What if you got conditioned, you got the idea of yourself that was far smaller than what you're actually capable of? What if you're capable of and supposed to be stepping into a much greater sense of yourself in the sense of leadership? Because leadership is a personal thing before it's ever anything else. You have to lead yourself before you can lead others. I know it's not a particularly big surprise. See, here's where I want to start, is that I believe right now leadership in a st is in a state of crisis. And I'm not talking particularly, or, although I could be talking about pol politics, I'm actually talking about leadership in general. It seems to me that it's in a pretty sad state that we are in many ways really struggling to find great leaders and there seems to be so few really great leaders out there. So few who are willing to step into the role of what it takes to lead. I believe that leadership is in fact a rare commodity. I think that leadership is extraordinarily rare in the true sense of what it is because of what it takes. Because being a leader means you have to tap into your deep greatness. Now, let me rephrase that. I'm going to go back. I'm actually going to correct myself. I apologize. Being a leader doesn't take anything. Being a leader takes being put in a role, being given a title. But that doesn't make you a leader. Being a leader at title, that, that doesn't take anything. Being a real leader, being an authentic leader, being an empowered leader, that's rare. That takes enormous amounts of strength, internal strength, uh, in, internal grit, if you will, for you to truly step up into that level of leadership is going to take probably everything you've got and a little bit more. In fact, leadership, in the context of what I'm talking about, will not leave you the same. See, I started out by saying that what if you're not who you have believed you are? What if you bought the program, but that's not actually who you are? But leadership reveals you. So what do I mean when I say leadership? I'm not talking about necessarily leading um, the country or leading your city or even leading the, uh, the people in your team. It could be leading your children. I had a conversation with, with, a, with a gentleman last week who was talking about how he is a father and he's in you know a custody battle and so many fathers have been in those situations and the courts are not generally particularly have not seemed to be at least uh, particularly favoring of men they tend to go more in the direction of the the female uh, and seeing them as the more nurturing and whether that's right or wrong is not not a generalized point I'm, I'm here to make what I'm here to say is that in the case that we talked about this gentleman was telling me about the kind of woman that is the mom of his child and the kind of man that she's with and that he's concerned about the health of his child, the psychological, mental, emotional health of his child. And the only answer to that is that you have to lead. We are all leading by example. You have to model something else. You have to decide to model something that's not being modeled. You have to offer something that's not being offered. You have to be willing to show another example. You have to be willing to show something else, another way of being, another 
example. So, and that example, and what I'm talking about here is the example of stepping into your deep greatness. Like, think about even your children. Do you call to your children to step into their greatness? Or do you fix their problems? This is part of parenting. We don't bring out the deep greatness in our kids. We fix their problems. We look to fix their problems. Well, what if you didn't fix their problems? What if you call to them to step into their own deep greatness? Leadership is a rare commodity. We need more leaders, but that means that we need you. Each of us needs our, ourselves to lead our own children. Whatever it is you've been told leadership is, if it doesn't include personal courage, we're not talking about leadership. And personal courage is actually about giving up who you thought you were. That's incredibly courageous because you have got all the chips on black. You are fully invested in being you. You are fully invested in being the you that you've sold the world or that you've been sold you're supposed to be in the world and deciding instead that you might be something else. That takes enormous amounts of courage. That takes enormous amounts of strength. That is what it takes. That's what you're gonna have to dig down deep and find, that's why it's called deep greatness. You have to dig down deep to find it. Leadership is courageous, but it's not rigid. Tapping into your deep greatness requires enormous flexibility. And it's a, it's a weird dichotomy because it requires absolute Bam, this is who I am. And at the same time, complete wide openness. It's, it's, this, it's this seemingly, seeming dichotomy between two places in that I will be rock solid in who I am. And at the same time, I will be completely open to discovering more about myself, to discovering that I'm not who I thought I was. So what is that center? And then what is that flexibility? And it's interesting because that centerpiece, that immovable centerpiece is, is the soulful part of you. It's the part of you that says in, in the face of all the rejection, in the face of everything that comes at you that says that you are, you should, you're playing, you know, you should be playing smaller and you should be, <coughs> excuse me, you should be conforming all those things that it's saying to you that you're getting bombarded with and knowing who you are knowing that I'm made for something else I'm made to make a difference see I believe with all of my heart and all of my soul that each one of us came here to do spectacular things and I don't mean that we're leading thousands of people that's not what it means Doing spectacular things means doing spectacular things. It doesn't have to be grandiose. Maybe you're just being a spectacular grandfather or a spectacular grandmother. Or maybe you're being a spectacular aunt. Or maybe you're being a spectacular godparent and you don't have any children. Maybe you're being a spectacular friend. But really being spectacular is part of what it means to be stepping into your deep greatness and holding solid to this is what I want to be. This is what matters most to me in my life. This is the center of who I am. That matters. That's the immovable place I'm talking about. And the flexibility is in how I do it. The flexibility is, is this the best way? Is this the best form? Is this the best outlet for me to reveal that deep greatness? For me to, to be that magnificence? Is that what it is? Or is it something else altogether? That's what I'm talking about. That's what, I, what I'm talking about when I talk about being rigid and flexible at the same time. It's a bizarre dichotomy, but it's something that we have to embrace. We have to recognize that there has to be that part of us that doesn't move. And there has to be that part of us that is always willing to move.
Just give me a moment. I just realized I knocked my microphone out. Just gonna pull this in. <laughs> if I can. No, I can't. So I'm gonna, sorry, the picture's gonna go weird for a moment. And maybe even the sound. Now, the sound just got a lot better. I hope it got a lot better. Throughout your life, let's get back into this. Throughout your life, you have changed. I hope you've changed at least. Get my coffee. Throughout your life, you have changed. Throughout your life, things have come up. They've given you the opportunity to change, and hopefully you have changed along with them, that you've grown from them. Yeah. And the interesting thing about human beings is we don't like change much. We like things to be the same. We like things to be predictable. We feel far safer in that predictability. But the truth of the matter is that if we don't change and we don't grow, we actually die. That's just a rule of nature, is that which is not growing is dying. So I, things have come along, they've forced you, they've pushed you to change, and you've had to do that. But the speed of change, I want to talk to you for a moment about the speed of change. The speed of change is determined by your attachment to who you were. Let's stop for a moment and think about that. The speed of change is determined by your attachment to who you were versus your pull to who you want to be. That's what's determined it. Your attachment to who you were versus who you want to be. So you may feel the pull towards a desired outcome, but you'll also feel the anchor of who you've been. It's natural for you to have both of those experiences. It's natural for you to have both of those things going on at the same time. And without doubt, without doubt, the greater pull will be to be, will be to stay who you've been. That's always going to be easier. That's going to be the anchor. So I want to give you some tips and some insights and a bit of clarity in how to, how to deal with this. I want you to think about who your favorite actor is. I mean, think about who it is. I, I don't know who it is. Um, you know, maybe it's Robert De Niro. Maybe it's somebody else. Um, and the guy who's my favorite, is, whose name has just gone out of my head for a moment, um, but I'll tell you some of the roles he's played. He played Bane in Batman. He played, um, he play, he's played a hillbilly. He's played um, a London gangster. Um, he's played all these different roles. And every single role, he's almost unrecognizable. There are some actors you watch and it's kind of like, you know, they're reading the lines. It's this, you know, you probably, you think that, if I met this person in real life, I'm pretty sure that that's who they are. But with a great actor, with a great character actor, you know, you can absolutely hate them in a role. I mean, hate the personality in that role. And you can absolutely love them in another role. And it's like, it's the same person, but they've taken on this entire persona. How do they do that? How is that possible? Because they embody the character. So here's my question to you, here's my tip for you, here's my strategy to assist you in, your, in the changes that you want slash need to make. Who is the character that you're, you're looking to become? If, if the person you are is the actor who is about to take on the role of the person you want to become, would you write out that character? Of course you would. You'd write it out. You, you would write out all the aspects of that character. Who is that character? You would do the backstory on that character because maybe their backstory is different than yours. Maybe your... Whoops, pulled my mic out again. Did it again, sorry. Maybe in your backstory, you had a shitty childhood because your dad was a drunk. And of course, I'm making, I'm making this up entirely, right? So maybe your backstory is that your childhood sucked 
because your dad was a drunk. But maybe in the character that you want to become, maybe the person you're aspiring to be, the backstory is slightly different. Not in, in, in content, but in context. Meaning, maybe the character you're trying to become, that person also had a, a father who was a drunk, but the difference is how they saw that. That person, the person you're aspiring to be, sees their father as the greatest gift rather than the curse. See, I want you to think about who you want to become and think about it as a character that you get to step into. Think about it as being an actor who gets to play a role. If you get to play the role and you get to fully embody the role, who do you become? Think about acting it out. And, and by the way, I would challenge you to, to give your new self another name, a nickname. See, when I'm feeling, uh, when I'm feeling a bit stoic, that's a good word for it, when I'm feeling a bit stoic, when I'm feeling a bit rigid, a bit stuck, a bit stiff and a bit dry, I get in contact with Bear. Now, in case you don't know, my name is Dove, and the, um, the translation of Dove into English means Bear, B-E-A-R, Bear. Right, so I get in touch with Bear, and Bear, you might think, is a big, powerful being, but in fact, Bear is a little boy who is probably about two and a half years old, incredibly playful and joyous. That you know, you've seen kids who are about two, two and a half years old, they're incredibly playful and joyous, and they're they're very, uh, very curious. And so when I'm when I'm looking for that part of me, you know, I that's where I go. I find Bear. So you find these different aspects of yourself and you build this character as if you're going to play the role. The resistance, the, 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 the resistance is who you've been attached to becoming. The speed of change is simply determined by how attached you are to who you were. So play the role of who you want to be. And part of it is to write it down. I want you to think about who you were five years ago, who you were 10 years ago, who you were 20 years ago, there are some things that have not changed. There, there are. There are some things that have not changed that really should. And there are some things that have changed immensely. How did they change? You wanted them to change. That's the answer. It became too damn painful for you to stay the same, so you found a new way. That's how they changed. Take on the character. In fact, what I want to challenge you to do is to write a letter to yourself. And I've done this exercise with, with many of my clients, and I'm going to give you this exercise. I did this exercise with my friend Franco Lombardo, who is now an international speaker. He speaks around the world. He works with some of the wealthiest families in the world, assisting them in creating a safe space inside of their family for their wealth. Phenomenal work. He does amazing work around the world. But one of the exercises I gave him was, when he was going through some challenges, I said, I want you to write a letter from your 70-year-old self back to you. And I want the letter to be your 70-year-old self telling you what it's like to be you at 70. How have you changed? How do you look at yourself? How do you see yourself? What is the quality of your life? Have you, at 70, stepped into your deep greatness? And of course you have. So write that letter. But before we go any further, as I'm getting towards the end of this show, what I want you to know is this. I've talked about that the speed of change is your resistance to becoming who you, who you know you should be, who you know you can be, versus the anchor to who you are. And that is that resistance between the anchor of who you were or who you've been versus who you are. That's the, 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 that's the pull between the two spaces. But I want to tell you about another factor that I've seen that stops people from really becoming who they can be, who they are at the depth of their being. And that's this. 
you will not be able to reach your deep greatness. You will not be able to tap into that heart and soul and depth of who you really are. You won't be able to get to that. You'll never, you won't get access to that until you can forgive yourself. Self-forgiveness is the key. Just stop for a moment and ask yourself, what have you not forgiven yourself for? What have you not forgiven yourself for? What is it you're still holding a deep grudge against yourself for? What is it that you're telling yourself is unforgivable? And if need be, go and ask for forgiveness. And if you've asked for forgiveness before and it's been denied, go ask again. But more than anything, ask yourself for forgiveness. Because I know that I am a good person. I know that. I know that my heart is in the right place. I know that my soul is in the right place. I know that I'm always willing to give and serve and do all kinds of great things. But I also know I've been a fucking asshole. I have been a shit. I have been selfish. I've been mean. I've been all of those things. And what I know is the access to the kindness, the greatness, the softness, the generosity, they're not accessible to me until I forgive myself for all the other things. I carry what you've heard me talk about on some of the other shows, healthy shame for the way I was. Healthy shame is different than guilt. Healthy shame means it's like I carry this, I want to carry this. It's like a battle scar that tells me that I, that's not accessible to me anymore. That's not who the truth of who I am. That's simply a reaction to who, what was going on at the time. But it's not who I am. That's the truth. So yes, I've been those things. And I've been some of those things that at the time seemed unforgivable. But until I fully forgave myself, until I was willing to forgive myself, I can never tap into that greatness. Because if I carry that level of pain and I can't forgive myself, then I tell myself that I don't deserve to step into deep greatness. And if I don't deserve to step into deep greatness, then I can't claim the deep greatness. And if I can't claim the deep greatness, then I can't be a leader in my own life, in the lives of the people that I love, or in any way, shape, or form. Leadership doesn't exist without deep courage. Deep, deep courage. So have the courage to forgive yourself. Have the courage to admit you were wrong. Have the courage to claim the deep greatness within you that makes all the difference in the world. That, my friend, is my message to you today. You were born magnificent, whole, complete. And I know you forgot it, and I know you've got good reasons to forget it. I know you've been conditioned away from it, and I know that shit has happened. And I know that sometimes you've been a complete asshole. We've all done it. Admit that. Don't deny it. Say sorry. Ask for forgiveness from others, and ask for forgiveness from your own heart and from your own soul, and reach out. You were made magnificent and whole. And I love you. I see you. I believe in you. And I love you. I don't believe the shit you've told, been told. You have abilities. You have greatness that no one else has. You are unique. Leadership without personal courage is not leadership. And you cannot lead another until you lead yourself. And you cannot lead yourself without self-forgiveness that allows you to tap into your deep greatness. I hope you've enjoyed today's show, this episode of Deep Greatness, which is about truth, lies, leadership, and of course, self-forgiveness. If you've enjoyed the show, I encourage you to share the show with others who you feel will get value about it. It's always important 
Let's share the wealth, my friends. Let's share the wealth. Please do that. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you sharing the show with everybody you know. And, of course, stay curious, my friends. Stay curious about what it is that you need to forgive yourself for in order to truly step into your deep greatness. My name is Dov Barron. I'm the founder of FullMontyLeadership.com. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. I will go over them all. I will get back to you. I will answer those questions. I'm happy to do that. If you want to find out about tapping into your deep greatness by being coached and mentored by me, then reach out to me. You can send me a uh, private message right here. You can contact me at FullMontyLeadership.com. And I'll even give you my private email address, Dov, D-O-V, at DoveBaron.com. You can write to me. If you want to find out how to tap into your deep greatness, reach out to me. I only work with a select number of clients, but I'm happy to have a conversation with you. And I'm happy to give you 15 or 20 minutes of my time to see what we can do together and if we can work together. Like I said, you want to find out more about me, go to FullMontyLeadership.com. Of course, we're on YouTube, and you can check me out there, Dove Baron Full Monty Leadership. On uh, iTunes, it's Dove Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Show. You can find that there, number one show for Fortune 500 listeners. Great shows, great interviews, amazing, amazing, amazing people. You can find my blogs, you can find my articles all over. Just Google Dove Baron, D-O-V-B-A-R-O-N.com. All right, my friends, take care. Till next time, this is Dove Baron, and I'm out.